Hey guys, welcome back. So when I started the Everything Machine project, the original idea was to not only utilize 3D printing in order to transform a single motor into any machine a maker might need, but also the idea was to hopefully create it in a way where the machine could also be used as a universal power supply. And over the past year, we've been focusing mainly on attachments and conversions, and we've made a ton of progress there but we haven't really experimented much with how it might be used in other ways. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do in this video. And considering how most people in our Discord are using their machine for either lapidary or jewelry making, I thought it might be useful if as our first attempt trying to utilize the power supply for other uses, we would see if maybe we could turn it into either a plating machine or an electro polishing machine. And if it works, I think that would be really useful. And it would open the door to an entirely new category of uses for the machine. For example, the most obvious would be traditional gold or silver plating for jewelry making, maybe brush plating, electro forming, electro polishing, electro etching, electro rust removal. Yeah, so if this works, and if we could nail down a system within the confines of what this power supply can deliver, I think it might be an incredibly useful addition to an already incredibly useful machine. Okay, so before we start, small disclaimer, I don't have a ton of electro plating experience, I've done a little bit of brush plating. I've tried electroforming maybe two or three times, done a little bit of etching, rust removal, but for the most part, I'm a beginner. So we're gonna be learning this together. Unless, of course, someone watching this does have more experience. And if so, please let me know in the comments what I might be doing wrong or what we could be doing better. That would be incredibly helpful. Okay, so to get started, we need to create a positive and a negative lead that extends from the power supply. And with the gumball, that's really easy. We can just utilize the DIN plug in the back, you can get these male and female three prong plugs on AliExpress for like 50 cents. So we're gonna start with the male plug and it's really simple. You're just gonna solder a lead of wire to both the left and the right prong. Don't worry about the one in the middle. We're not gonna use that one right now. And to reassemble, you just sandwich the two plates and the entire assembly slides back into the rubber case. It's really easy. Now we have a positive and a negative wire that we can access anytime we want just by plugging into the DIN plug port that's normally being used for the micro motor. And if it works like I hope, we'll be able to tune the voltage with the speed controller knob. Quick test with the multimeter, and it looks like we're gonna have an available range of between one and 100 volts. And after a little bit of research, it looks like this should work fine for plating, etching, or electro polishing like jewelry sized objects with plenty of room to spare. So we should be able to work on even larger size stuff if we need to. I don't think I can get an accurate reading on current yet until it's in the solution and hooked up to a workpiece. So that's what we're gonna do next. We need something to electro polish. As I showed you guys in a previous video, the machine can already do metal casting. So let's do that. We'll cast something and then hopefully electro polish it to a mirror finish. This is why I wanted an electro polishing setup. Polishing rough castings with abrasives is already pretty easy with the machine, but it becomes more difficult when your castings have a lot of small details or overhangs because you can't get your polishing wheel into the small cracks. This is where electro polishing shines. You can get a mirror finish on the entire piece, even in areas that can't be reached with manual polishing tools. So I first need to 3D print a master of what I wanna cast. I just got a new resin 3D printer, so I think I wanna use that. Until now, we've only focused on FDM printing on the channel, but a lot of people reached out and asked if the gumball can be made with a resin printer. I mean, I've been wanting to get a new one for a while, but I've just been putting it off because, well, for a few reasons. For one, until now, I wasn't a huge fan of resin printers. I mean, for jewelry making, you don't have a choice. FDM doesn't even come close to the resolution required for jewelry. But I found them to just be frustrating to use. They're smelly, messy, prone to print failures constant leveling issues, and it's not that I haven't tried several. My first resin printer was a Solus from Junction 3D. I got it almost 10 years ago. It was a really expensive DLP machine made specifically for jewelry. It was like almost 10 grand, and the print quality was fantastic. At the time, it was in a class of its own, like unbelievable. But the build plate was like the size of a credit card. It was tiny. Fine for most jewelry, but that's about it. And over the years, I tried several resin printers that offered a larger build plate, like the Form 1, and a couple others, but they were all a nightmare to use. And the print quality was nowhere near as good as my original Solus, which I'm still using, by the way. So I told myself I won't buy another resin printer until one comes out that has a large build plate, has auto leveling, and a resolution that's at least as good as my Solus. I had to wait several years. I ordered test prints from every new printer that came out, trying to find something that would replace my Solus. And finally, a machine came out that I think might be just what I was waiting for. I had to pull the trigger. 
the company's Pio Create and the machine's called the Hallet X1. If the name sounds familiar, it's because that's what Creality called their line of resin printers. But this isn't a Creality. Pio Create is like a sister company to Creality. They used to make dental 3D printers, but they're moving into consumer printers now, and this is their first one. It's got a build volume large enough to print the everything machine, which is another reason why I chose this printer. I think I'm going to print this ornate cross. All these details and recesses would be difficult to polish with abrasives, so it's a perfect candidate for electro polishing. There's a few unique features on this machine that really make it stand out from anything else on the market. The first is this build plate. It's got these weird notches that retract when you twist the handles that let your work easily pop off so you don't have to even touch it. The build plate slides into the machine on tracks and it just sits there without any clamps. I think that design decision has something to do with what they call true auto leveling. Another cool feature is unlike other printers where the build plate moves and the resin vat is stationary, on this printer, it's the build plate that's stationary and the resin vat that moves. I don't know what their reason is for that design choice, but maybe it helps prevent the resin from settling, like it keeps it agitated. I'm not really sure. But if you like to tinker and add dyes or additives to your resin, that feature might come in really handy. But speaking of resin, it comes with an optional unit for automatically feeding and heating your resin, and it dispenses the perfect amount of resin required for whatever you're about to print. And when you're done, you can tell it to suck the resin back into the bottle. This makes cleanup so much easier. But even if you decide not to get the automatic unit, the resin vat for this machine is really nice because it has a pouring spout built in so you can easily drain the vat if you want to do it the old fashioned way. When your print's finished, you insert this tray into the slots in your resin vat to catch your print when it pops off. It's really a clean process. And with this machine, you almost don't even have to use gloves. Okay, so the print, it turned out great. The Hallet X1 comes with an optional wash and cure station. And after a 25 minute cure, this is what we have. I gotta say, I am really happy with the print quality. This is my first print with this machine and I didn't even run a calibration file. I just used recommended settings I found online, so there's no doubt that if I spent a little time dialing in the settings, there's plenty of room to get it even better. But I figured since this print is going to be used for sand casting, perfect resolution really isn't necessary. I went over this process in a previous video, so I'm not going to talk about it here. But if you're new and you want to learn how to sand cast using the everything machine, I did a video on the process about six months ago. And this is how the raw casting looks. A lot of people don't realize just how much detail you can get with sand casting if you practice. The two biggest limiting factors are part geometry and grainy surface finish. But if we nail down a quick and easy electro polishing process, I think we can at least eliminate that one. And if you're creative with your models, you can actually sand cast some pretty complicated shapes. So next we need to connect wires to our anode and our cathode. We could just wrap them, but I want the part to hang horizontally, so I think I'm just going to attach it on the back with a quick tack weld using my Pulse Arc welder. I did a review on this machine in my last video. I love this thing. I get so much use out of it. Now we need to mix up an electrolyte for metal polishing. We want it to be a mixture of phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid with about a 75 to 25 percent ratio. There's other variables like temperature or additives that you need to consider if you're looking for perfect results. But this is just a proof of concept, so I'm not shooting for perfection. I just want to see if it works, so this solution I'm making here is down and dirty. Electro polishing is basically the opposite of plating, so instead of the negative or cathode, your workpiece gets attached to the positive or anode. So unlike plating where you're adding material, electro polishing removes material, specifically high points or peaks on the material's surface, and by removing those peaks, you're essentially smoothing out the surface on a microscopic level. It's sort of a complicated process, but if you've ever done vapor polishing with ABS, that's sort of what we're trying to do here, only with metal. The voltage is going to depend on what specific metal you're trying to polish. And since I cast this cross from aluminum, I'm going to try for about 25 volts. If this works, I'll eventually 3D print an indicator to screw on under the dial so we know exactly what voltage we're delivering with the knob. The amperage is going to be a little under what's recommended, so I'm just going to keep it in a little longer. I'm going to try six minutes and see what happens. I ended up letting it run through two cycles, and after washing it off, this is where we're at. Considering we started from a rough casting, it looks good. I mean, it definitely worked, but there's a lot of room for improvement. There's still noticeable pitting you can see in some areas. It could be that we didn't leave it in long enough, or that could be from bubbles sticking to the surface. You're supposed to use a surfactant in the solution to prevent that from happening, 
So, we'll try that next time. But regardless, there's definitely a noticeable improvement. So I'm going to call this a success. And we can revisit it again and hopefully improve the process. But now, I want to try plating. Let's see if the machine can do that. I think plating would be much more useful. If it works, we can potentially do immersion plating, brush plating, electroforming, which is really cool. It lets you not only coat 3D printed objects with metal, but you can even coat organic stuff. It's a cool process. So for this, the electrolyte is a little different. We're going to start with water. You should use distilled water, but I didn't have any. And since again, this is just a proof of concept, I'm using regular bottled water. For my copper, I'm using Root Killer that you can get from Home Depot, which is pure copper sulfate. And we finish with about 5% sulfuric acid. You should always wear gloves when handling acid. But I can't operate the camera with gloves, so I'm winging it. But this is really stupid. You should be smarter. When the copper sulfate fully dissolves, you're ready to go. Plating is the opposite of polishing. So for the anode, we're going to use this piece of copper pipe. And again, we're going to use the pulse arc welder to attach it. As a test piece, I'm just going to use a quarter because it's already polished, clean, and ready to go. And for voltage, I'm going to try about 4 volts. The plating started almost immediately, and I had full coverage after about a minute. But I left it in for about 5. And after a quick rinse in some water, this is the result. Honestly, I don't think I could ask for better results than this. It's perfect. This is really encouraging. Next, I'm going to try gold plating, brush plating, and maybe some etching and I'm going to work on perfecting the process. I'm going to start making 3D files for all the accessories needed for utilizing the power supply for all of this stuff. So yeah, lots more to come. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. As always, please consider subscribing, and if you want to build your own everything machine and get access to our private Discord, you can find all the information in the video description along with a link to my Amazon shop where I provide links to everything I use in my videos. I'll also add a link to the Halid X1 if you want to check that out. I've begun working on a lapidary CNC function for the gumball station that I hope I'll be ready to show you guys in my next video. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.